Okay, how about how do the pollen grains and embryo sac form in the first place? So first of all, we'll talk about the pollen grains in the anther. So what happens is, each anther contains four um, lobes. Normally, there's four lobes. And inside the lobes, there are tissues. And these tissues form uh, pollen sacs. So, um, yeah, it says here, it forms four pollen sacs, but I don't think that's the main point. The main point, it, it starts from the pollen sac. And again, remember, inside the lobe, there are tissues, and these tissues grow to form pollen sac. But inside the pollen sac, there are hundreds of pollen mother cells. Or we call them microspore mother cells. Oh my god, I went through that. Okay. Um, yeah, there are hundreds of pollen mother cells. We will we'll call them microspore mother cells because I prefer calling that, that because of uh, um, the male one is called microspore and the female one is called megaspore. So, um, yeah. Uh, we'll, I'll call them microspore mother cells and they are diploid or 2N. So what happens is this microspore mother cells undergo meiosis to form four microspore cells. So from microspore mother to become microspore. And since it undergoes meiosis, it becomes haploid. And four cells are formed. Four microspores are formed. They both, they all combine to become a tetrad, not combined. They are all known as a tetrad, collectively known as a tetrad. So each cell in a tetrad, they're still connected, but they're all different cells. And they all develop into a pollen grain. What ha so how does it develop into a pollen grain? The, uh, the nucleus inside the... Um, inside the pollen grain, no, okay, my, my bad, so it develops into a pollen grain, and then when it becomes a pollen grain, it actually divides by mitosis, it doesn't undergo cytokinesis, so it's still one cell, remember, it's still one cell, but the nucleus inside undergoes mitosis, so now this is haploid, this is haploid, this N is N, and it produces two cells, one is the generative nucleus, and one is the tube nucleus, so, um, the generative nucleus and the tube nucleus have their own specific functions. Uh, and I'll explain more of that in 6.3. Um, but what happens is, after they finish developing, so it, from microspore mother cell to become four microspores, each microspore develops to become pollen grain, and then the nucleus and the pollen grain divides into generative nucleus and tube nucleus. And then in the end, the wall of the, the anther, the pollen sac, it ends up bursting, and then the pollen grains are released. So when they get released, they will enter, um, they will try to get themselves towards the stigma. But again, I'll get to that later. Okay, how about um, embryo sac in the ovule? So, um, if, okay, this, this is an ovary gun. Normally, an ovary may contain multiple ovules, or maybe it'll only contain one ovule. But let's say it contains only one ovule. So, um, the connection from the uh, the ovule is, isn't actually connected to the ovary wall. It's actually in an open area. I, see, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can call it an open area. Lah. It's basically an empty area. So, um, but it can't just float in the air. Can If it floats in the air, number one, gravity will make it fall. The, it wouldn't even be part of the plant. Number two, how will the nutrients get from the roots and the, uh, from the roots of the plant to the... Um, to the embryo sac when it becomes fertilized or yeah you get what i mean so um yeah, how will the nutrients get there there's actually a connection here called the funicle and the, and just like in humans then where your nutrients come from is called the placenta so the placenta is basically where your funicle is connected to so again funicle is the attachment the placenta is where the nutrients come from and then, um, it says here, a mass of tissues inside the ovary develops forming a lump called the nucellus. So the nucellus is basically, um, it's protective tissue, I guess I can call it. And, uh, so this, this nucellus, it develops into the integument. So the integument, if you remember correctly, it becomes a seed coat or the testa, the protective layer of the seed. But that's another topic. Um, let's know that, um, the new cellus de develops into two layers and it's called the integument. And then uh, at the end of the integument, which is here, so that there, there is a opening. So why is there an opening here? We call it the micropile, by the way. Why is the micropile there? It's because we want to make sure that water and air are able to enter the seed during germination. Okay, one of the new cellus cells is called the megaspore mother cell, or also known as the embryo sac mother cell. 
So, um, yeah, the first layer is called the integument. The second layer is actually here. So, um, so before before it becomes like this, it's actually just one cell in the middle, I think. Yeah, one cell like this here. So we call it the megaspore mother cell. Or you can also call it the embryosac mother cell, but I call it the megaspore mother cell. I already mentioned it why earlier. So again, the megaspore and mother cell undergoes meiosis to form four megaspore cells, which are all haploid. But the difference here is, instead of four of them surviving and becoming a tetrad, three of them die. So three of them degenerate, and only one megaspore cell develops. It is still a haploid, by the way, so it's still N. And then after that, so for some goddamn reason, the megaspore mother cell, eh, they're not megaspore mother cell, the megaspore cell, the one remaining one, undergoes mitosis three times. So since it undergoes three times, it divides from one to two to four to eight. So now it has eight nuclei. But guess what? There's only seven cells. So how does it become from eight nuclei to seven cells? Remember that a mitosis is not the same as full cell division. Mitosis is the, is, is, the, is the division of the nucleus. For it to become separate cells, it has to undergo cytokinesis. But um, only some of them undergo cytokinesis. So what happens is, um, again, there are eight nuclei. And they will go to their own places. So it will become three, two, three. So first of all, the three at the opposite end of the micropile. Here's the micropile. Here's the micropile. At the opposite end, we call it the antipodal cells. So, um, let me just read what the function of the antipodal cells are. I forgot the main function of the antipodal cell. I remember, I remember the, the other one though. So, I'll get to that, I'll get to that first. Um, the other, uh, another tree moved to the end of the micropile, which, which is um, the, the same area as the micropile is. And then two of them become the synergic cell. And one of them becomes the X cell. The X cell is what becomes the zygote when you fertilize it. But the synergic cells here are to... I guess you can say, make the pollen grain get into the, the X cell, if you get what I mean. I'll, I'll explain it in 6.3. But um, yeah, the synergic cells help to fertilize the X cell, while the X cell is the cell that gets fertilized. And the antipodal cell, let me just see um, what it says. I forgot what it was. Um, okay, okay, I think I went to the wrong page. Okay. Oh, they serve, they serve to transfer nutrients from the parent plant into the embryo sac. So, uh, again, not again. Okay, so synergic cells, they secrete a substance to make the pollen tube get into the embryo sac to fertilize the egg cell. But where does the nutrients come from? The nutrients actually come from the antipodal cells. And then how about the two in the middle? These are called the polar nuclei. And the polar nuclei, they just form into the, the, the center. But the thing is, why seven cells? Because these two nuclei, Combined together, not combined together, they, they share a cell. And this is called the synergic, uh, not synergic, um, central cell. So there are three antipodal cells, two synergic cells, one X cell, and one central cell. But the central cell has two nuclei. So yeah, that's, um, that'll be important when you get to 